So in this lecture of our database testing with Playwright, I'm gonna go a bit further and I'm gonna write one more scenario this time, something like this. So basically we're gonna see how we can leverage the power of ND framework for querying the database to perform database testing with Playwright in much, much efficient fashion. So as you can see, I'm writing one more scenario over here where I'm gonna say, check the products count increments once added. So as you know that every single time that you add any product, it is gonna be added in the application over here. So what if the list of product goes on increasing to more than 50 or 70? You can't go and query each and every data in the UI, like you can get all the rows from the UI, but what if there is a pagination happens and goes to three page or four page, will you go and click each and every pagination of the page and get all the list of the element? It's gonna be cumbersome, right? Like it's gonna have 10 element in the first page. Then if you go to the second page, it's gonna have another 10 elements. Third page, then you're gonna have 10 elements. So you're gonna get each and every rows of this particular table, store it into a collection and see what is the count. It's really, very, very cumbersome. So in order to avoid these problem, you can just go into the database directly, query and see how many number of records are there after you add any new product. So that is the way you can actually do the count testing of the number of products. And there we go, we have this database testing approach to do this operation. So in order to do that, I have written this particular scenario. So it basically says that given I ensure to count the total number of product from the DB, so before I add any product, I ensure that, that I count all the number of products from the database. And then I perform creation of a new product, which is gonna be exactly the same step definitions as you can see over here, these two lines. But then I'm gonna say, then I see the count of product increments. So this is where I'm gonna write the logic of doing the incrementation verification. And I delete the created product for cleanup. So basically, once I complete my testing, I'm also gonna delete this particular product so that it won't exist within your application. So it's not really polluting the data as such. So those are things that I'm gonna be doing over here and we'll see how it can be uh, tested. So in order to do that, the first thing is I have to implement these three step definitions as you can see over here. So in order to do that, I'm gonna right click, define the step definitions. I'm gonna copy all the step definitions which are something that I need to implement in the step definition file. So I'm gonna copy all of them in the clipboard and I'm gonna go to the product steps.cs file and I'm gonna go and paste them all over here. That's all I'm gonna be doing. So once I do that, this purple colors will just turn into like a normal color because it's been uh, copy pasted. So probably if I just try to build the solution, you should see that the colors have turned out to be black color, which means I can now go to the step definitions over here. So that's working fine, great. And now I need to implement this particular feature, which is the step definitions over here, where it says that given I ensure that the total number of product from the database exist. So in order to do that, I'm going to go right click, go to the step definition over here. And the first thing which I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna get all the products and its count. That is the first thing which I need to do. So how do I get all the products and it count? So in order to get the list of all the products and its count, if you just go to the application, which is the product API over here, and if you just go to the controllers or the product repository, you will notice that in the product controller, you also have got an API which is gonna basically tell that in order to get all the products, this controller is being used, which this API is being used. So if you don't know the MVC pattern of the coding that I'm showing it over here, it's better that you actually do it from the application itself. So let me just top all these things just running uh, over here. And I'm gonna go start the application this time, something like this. And you will see that we have got the Swagger documentation over here. So we have got the get products endpoint. And if I try out and execute that, it is gonna give me all the different products exist within my application, right? So this is the way that you can get all the products. So based on all the products, we can get the count as well because this is basically a collection of all the products. So I'm gonna do this exact same thing this time. So basically, 
what I'm going to do it is I'm going to go to my code over here and I'm going to say, so we know that in order to get all the products, we can use the repository pattern. And if you remember in our last video, we discussed about the repository pattern. So if I just go to the repository pattern, which is the uh, I product repository, if I'm not wrong. So if I go to the product repository, which is this one, and you see that we have got a method called as get all products. So this is going to give the list of all the products which exist within our application. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go and add a dependency injection this time. So let me go do that. I'm going to say I product repository of the product repository. And I'm going to add the uh, field as underscore product repository. I'm going to use this underscore product repository from the collection within my step definition over here. So I'm going to say underscore product repository and I'm going to get all the products. So this method should give me all the product exist within my database. This is so cool, right? Like now we can query the database as if like we are doing it via code. That is the power of the entity framework itself. And now I can get its count using the count method available within C sharp because this is a list of all the products that you have. So I can get all the counts over here. So this will give me the count of all the product and I can store the count something like this. But guess what? We also need to use this count within our validation while we do this. Then I see the count of products increment. So I need to use this count in this particular step definition to match and see if the count has increased from its current count, right? So in order to do that, first of all, we need to get this count out of this particular uh, step definition. Uh, so which I can probably do that using the scenario context. If you remember, we discussed about the scenario context.set method. So I'm gonna use the exact same thing over here as well. So all I'm gonna do it is I'm going to over here, I'm going to say scenario context dot and there is this set method where we can set the count that we want and we can store it in your key, which is like a, a key which we can use later on to query. So I'm going to say product count. So once you call the get method of the scenario context with the product count key, then you can get its count out from this particular method. So this is the way that you can get this value out from this method into another method or another step definition of spec flow. Hope we already discussed about this. So I'm not going to talk about that again. So that's how we can get the value out of it. And once we have this value, which is the count value, I can then do this. I can go to the next step definition, which is uh, then I see the count of the product increments. So how do I actually do that? Well, in order to do this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a scenario context dot get method. Quite easy. And within this get method, I'm going to pass the key of the method. So the key is nothing but the product count. If you remember this guy and I can get the product count out from this. So I'm going to say, and essentially because this is throwing us an error because we should define the type. So basically the type is going to be an integer type. So I need to also do that. So var expected count, expected product count probably is equal to this one. So I'm actually expecting this count plus one, right? Because every time we add any product, it's going to increment the number of product counts. So let's say if there are 10 product and once you add any product, it's going to be 11 product. So you should just do an expected product count as 11 over here. And then we also need to define the actual product count. So the actual product count is equal to the actual product count that you are going to be getting this time from the repository pattern, which is this one. So that's going to be your actual count. So this is expected and this is the actual. And now I can assert them both using this assert uh, dot equals method. And this assert is basically going to be coming all the way from the X unit. So I can do that. And I'm going to say the expected 
a product count and the actual product count if they are matching quite cool right so now that we have done all of them over here so this way we know that it is going to give us the total number of product counts that we wanted the last operation we're going to do it is the deletion of that particular uh, product that we have actually uh, created well in order to delete the product if you just go to our delete functionality that we have already written if you remember in the uh, ensure method so go to the tab definition you'll notice that instead of this particular method like the api we actually use the product repository of delete product by name so we can use the same logic this time as well so basically i can do the exact same thing over here as well so i'm gonna do this i'm gonna go delete the product so go to the step definition and i'm going to say underscore product repository or delete product by name and the product name but now you may ask like hey Karthik, where is this product name because we don't even know what is the product being added so that we can get that particular product name out well in order to do that we need to once again store the product name before somewhere like how we did already over here as you remember like every single time when we create a new product we also store the we also get the product something like this and we also set the product within the scenario context something like this you remember this is how we were doing all these days so we can do that as well we can store the product something like this so this is the place where we create the product i'm going to use the scenario context dot set and i'm going to set the product dot name once i create it and i'm going to say product name as the key so now i can use this scenario context uh, within my delete operation over here so var product name is equal to uh, underscore scenario context dot get of the product name so that should give me the product and i can pass it to the delete product over here so easy right that's all i guess that should work this time so we will try to see if that code really works for doing that i'm just going to go to the products over here um, and i'm going to build this solution this way we're going to have the new test over here check the product count increments and i'm going to run this test uh, sorry i think i forgot to run the application which is my bad so I'm going to start running the app and now let's run the test there we go it runs it creates the product and also verifies the test and it works so this is already working so now if you go back to the application and if you just refresh it you won't see the camera over here which is gone because it's it was there before and it's deleted already so uh, if I just go again and run the same test again, you will notice that every single time it's going to create a camera for me and it deletes that. But now the test has got failed suddenly and I'm just looking why the test has failed. I think I know what is the problem because it says that value cannot be null. And this is happening because if you remember, we are saying here in the background that given I ensure the speaker data is cleaned up if already exists. So if you just go to the definition of this particular method over here you see that i'm always trying to delete a product but what if that particular product is nothing but the speaker if it doesn't exist so if that doesn't exist then this is always going to fail so instead of doing that we just have to add one more condition here which we should have did in our last lecture but i have not and i'm gonna say if the product repository dot uh, get product uh, over here get product by and there we go we have to do one more implementation here so basically you see that now i have to get a product which is going to have a name as the product name which i'm looking for but our repository pattern that we have built has got no such method which is getting the product by its name we only have the getting by product by its id method so how do I get the product by name? Well, in order to do that, I'm gonna go to 
the repository pattern over here within our application. And I'm telling you why this is going to be a bit complex. If you think that you are not a developer of this application and if you think that this is going to be hard for you, I would say just ask your developer to implement the functionality. If not, you can do it this way. So all you have to do it is you can write one more uh, interface declaration of the method. I'm going to say that get product by name and it's going to be a string of uh, name, something like that. And I'm going to go to this uh, method, the ID product repository, and I'm going to implement the interface over here. So it's going to add a new method all the way for me down below. This time, instead of me getting it from ID, uh, I'm going to get from the name. So don't worry, I'm just going to run this thing a bit faster because this is the coding part of the application, which I don't want you to, to spend time on understanding. But yeah, I'm just going to do this one straight away so that you can understand how easy it is as well. So assumingly, you have a method name called as get product by name, something like this. You can do it as well. So you can just pass the product name and if it is not equal to null, something like that. So if I run this test again, you should see the code should just work fine without any problem. There we go and creates the product and deletes it and the test should get passed for you this time, which is cool. So now if I go to the uh, local host of 8000 and if I go to the product, you see that we don't have any of the camera here, even though I did create a camera because it's deleting after it creates the camera as well, uh, even though it's verifying for me. So if you just don't believe me how this works, so if I just go to, then I see the count of the product, which is this one. So if I go to the definition, put a breakpoint over here. And if I try to debug this code, you'll see that now the expected count is going to be the count which is coming up from this particular step definition. So you see that the count is now five because it is four plus one that we have got. And if you just do a step over, then you will see that it's going to be the count is five as well. So we have the, uh, the first one is going to be the actual step definition, which is going to be four plus one. So if you just do a quick watch, you see that it is actually four uh, and then four plus one is five, but the actual product is also five. So we are matching the entire assertion over here and just works fine for me. So if I hit continue and you can see that it's coming up all the way to the delete operation, uh, it's coming to the delete by name. So this is the way that we can ensure that we can do a even better database testing using the entity framework that we have got over here. Catch you in the next scenario where we'll be talking about how we can edit a product and how we can leverage the power of any framework to do those operations.